China's 320,000-ton tanker Kaigue has a load comparable to that of a 6,000 knots train and does not need to refuel once it circles the equator. How was the 320,000 tons giant ship built and launched? Let's take a closer look in this video. In recent years, China has made remarkable achievements in the field of shipbuilding, and its strength is not inferior to Japan and South Korea. Now China has created many sea giants. The most representative of these is the giant ship Kaigue. Speaking of the construction of the Kaigue, we must first mention the epidemic. Under the influence of the epidemic, global oil prices have plummeted. For a while, oil was dubbed a resource that is cheaper than mineral water. As a result, all countries are actively buying oil, and China is also not to be outdone. It has dispatched nearly a hundred giant cruise ships of over 10,000 tons to buy oil, and one of them is the Kai Gui. It is independently developed by China, with a total length of 333 meters, a width of about 60 meters, and a total height of more than 70 meters, which is equivalent to the height of a 23 stories building. The deck area alone is almost four football fields, and the load capacity is as high as 320,000 tons, basically equivalent to 6,000 fully loaded trains. The displacement is also astonishingly large, about seven times that of the Chinese aircraft carrier Liaoning. This Chinese 320,000 tons giant ship has extraordinary comprehensive capabilities. It has a speed of 31 kilometers per hour, strong power, and long-lasting battery life. It can reach more than 40,000 kilometers and can circle the Earth's equator. How did this 320,000 tons ship be launched after it was built? Why is it known as the best cruise ship in China? The manufacture of modern large-scale ships generally adopts a modular design and construction scheme, that is, each section of the ship is built first and then assembled in a unified manner. This method of shipbuilding maximizes efficiency, especially for ships of this size. But no matter what kind of ship it is, it will inevitably need to be launched after the construction is completed. Usually, a giant ship will not be built directly at sea. Although this situation does exist, it is often after the main structure of the ship is completed, and then the next step of launching and outfitting is carried out. This is also a common way for the Chinese Navy to build large warships. Because it can reduce the occupancy of the dock, but the main structure still needs to be built in the dock, so the step of launching is still required. At present, there are mainly four launching methods in shipyards, namely dock launching method, airbag method, hoisting method, and guide rail method. Among them, the dock type launching method is to build a large dock first, one end of which is directly connected to the sea, and the other end is a dry dock. Large ships are built and assembled here. After the ship is completed, the gate needs to be opened to release the water, and the built ship will float. At this time, the giant ship can rely on its own power or tugboat to drive out of the dock. Although the dock method is simple, it occupies a large area and can only build one ship at a time. It may take several years to build a giant ship with a class of more than 300,000 tons like the Kaigue. The airbag method is actually very common. The principle of this method is to use the log to roll. In ancient times, when large-scale projects were carried out, round logs were often used as a means of transportation, and the movement of huge stones on the logs could effectively reduce friction. Now the airbag method is to replace the logs with inflatable airbags. These airbags have a very good load-bearing effect, and the manufacturing cost is relatively low, 
so they are also an essential tool for many shipyards to launch ships. The hoisting method is even simpler. Use a large crane to translate the finished ship to the sea to complete the launch. However, this method is often only suitable for ships with a smaller tonnage. After all, the lifting capacity of a general gantry crane is only about a thousand tons. Of course, in order to hoist larger tonnage ships, China has also specially developed the giant crane Honghai, which has a maximum hoisting weight of 22,000 tons. The last guide rail method is to build a guide rail after the ship is built and let the ship slide down the track. For example, the launch ceremony of the littoral combat ship of the U.S. Navy adopts this method. But if the boat is not strong enough, the impact at the moment of entering the water may cause the boat to fall apart. Since the tonnage of the 300,000 tons giant ship made in China is too large, None of the other launching methods can meet its launching needs, and only the dock launching method is suitable. For some small and medium countries, the number of domestic large-scale dry docks is limited, which affects the efficiency of shipbuilding. However, as a big country, China has many shipyards in the country, so there is no need to worry about the shortage of shipyards. This is why the international oil price continued to drop last year, and China was able to send multiple 300,000 tons giant ships to the Middle East to buy bottoms at one time. Knowing how the 320,000 tons tanker was launched, let us learn more about the unique construction technology of this giant tanker. From all aspects, the Kaigue tanker can only be described as an exaggeration. As the largest domestically produced tanker in China, the Kaigue has shown a big character in various performances. It is larger than an aircraft carrier, not only has a displacement equivalent to seven times that of the Liaoning aircraft carrier, but its deck area is basically equal to the size of four football fields. Its load capacity is also greater than that of most oil tankers in the world. When fully loaded, Kai Gue can carry 320,000 tons of crude oil, which is equivalent to the fuel consumption of China's entire country for a day. Even if all the oil pipelines are used, it will take a day and a night to completely fill the oil tanks of the Kai Gue. To build such a jumbo class tanker, the requirements for shipbuilding technology are very high. Generally speaking, the construction of a giant ship often requires hundreds of shipbuilders and a large number of design drawings, and can only be completed through large docks and giant gantry cranes. The Kaigue went even further. In order to build this giant, China used thousands of shipbuilders and a 600 tons gantry crane. The entire tanker is divided into nearly 300 sections, which are gradually hoisted to a large dock for final assembly. This is an impossible task for most countries in the world, and only a super shipbuilding country like China has the ability to complete it. The appearance of the Kaigue also marks that China has stronger competitiveness in the world ship market. In the past few decades, Japan and South Korea have monopolized the world shipbuilding industry. Before the rise of China, South Korea was the leader in shipbuilding. Nearly half of the 300,000 tons giant ships in the world were provided by South Korea's Diwu Shipbuilding Group. In recent years, with the continuous expansion of China's shipbuilding industry and the improvement of technology, South Korea's influence in the world's shipbuilding field was constantly being weakened. In 2014, China has monopolized 34% of the market share, forming a rivalry with South Korea. After the successful completion of the Kaigue, South Korea's slightly dominant situation was reversed in just a few years. 
The completion of the Kaigue has allowed countries around the world to see China's strong shipbuilding strength and potential. Kaigue, which weighs 320,000 tons, completed its final assembly in just one year. Due to China's high efficiency, all countries were more willing to hand over orders to China. Three years later, in 2017, the three major indicators of China's shipbuilding industry surpassed South Korea in one fell swoop, ranking first in the world. Today, China's market share has exceeded 40%, stabilizing the old shipbuilding countries such as Japan and South Korea. In general, China's ability to build a giant like the Kaigue is enough to show the strength of China's shipbuilding technology. In the future, China will continue to expand its own advantages, continue to make efforts in the two aspects of cost and efficiency, strive to seize 60% of the market share in the future, and achieve the ultimate goal of monopolizing the world shipbuilding market. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.